This is Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity. Alright, we are still here at the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. We just came out here to the Reliquary. We got the piece of Abaddon's hammer. We had a long conversation with the god Andra, or the goddess Andra, if you prefer. And now, we need to recre recreate Abaddon's hammer. So presumably we need to take it to the, um, the White Forge. Reforge Abaddon's hammer. That is what we need to do. Now, when we came through this abbey, the other levels of it, with all the people... They were friendly to us. They didn't attack us because they believed that we were their tide bringer. However, we have now fought the leader of these people who tried to kill us, the High Abbot, and I do not now know if when we go back through here if they are going to be hostile or not. I hope they're not. I do not want to fight my way back through all these guys. I will if I have to, obviously, but I'm hoping sure. that they will be still neutral to us. So we can just leave. We're going to find out, though. Okay, so check it out. This is... Where we came from. We came out this door right here. We went through the water... Hey, now. Loot. Got some beer. We went through the water gate. Water gate. <laughs> and we came up here. Now there's that way I can go. Okay. the Halls of Penance, or, or, there's this way I can go, or there's this way I can go. So I don't know where all of these lead to. So I'm going to start, and this might get a little bit loading screen-tastic here as we're, as we're trying this out. I'm going to quick save. We're going to start with this and see where it goes. The path ahead leads to the outskirts of the Abbey. What would you like to do? Ooh, I can travel directly to the Foundry and Durgan's Battery. That is really helpful. But, before I do Slowly that, now. I want to see where this goes. I want to see where this goes. Because it could go somewhere cool. It could be a whole other treasure area that we don't yet know about. You never know. You never know. Could go anywhere. Why do I just see a black... Okay, there's the loading screen. Where are we now? Well, apparently we're in an area we've already been. Oh, look, they're not hostile. At least not yet. Okay. Okay. That's good. Oh, good. They're not hostile at all. Phew! Okay, I do not have to worry about fighting my way back. I mean, of course, I don't have to because I can go out that other way. But when I want to... I need to come back here with Maneha for her quest. Because she's a gift bearer of Andra. She wants to visit this place, so I feel like I should go get her and bring her back here. Um. But hold on. Oh, well, just hold on a second. Because there's one other way that I wanted to see where it went to. Alright, I know where that takes us now. I know where that takes us. I know where this down here takes us because that's where we came from. But what I don't know is where this goes. And I'd like to know. 
would like to know before we leave here. Does it go back to an area we've already been? Or does it go to a new area? Impossible to tell without just trying it, which is what we're doing. I don't know if anybody's watching right now, but if so, hi. Glad you're watching. Say something in chat. Care to? Oh, where are we? Is this a secret? Oh, apparently we've been in here because everything's looted. Oh, it's this room. Okay. Is there anybody we can talk to about what just happened to us? Like the fact that we got attacked by what's his name and then the fact that we actually talked to the god? This room is now empty, which is interesting. Man, there's a lot of people in here. I don't see that gift bear. Was there, wasn't there a gift bearer in here before? A named gift bearer that we could talk to? I don't see that person anymore. They're grateful for my service. See, they, they still think I'm the Tidebringer. They don't know, apparently, that I just got into mortal combat with... ...their High Abbot. Or any of that, I guess. All right, well. I feel like it would behoove me to go back now and get Maneha and bring her here. Just like I did with um, Zahua to do his quest. Alright, I think we can just sort of leave. You must gather your party before venturing forth. So have you have the fallen moon? I guess I'm heading back to... Kanua. If they make a Pillars of Eternity too, which I think they are making. Gelade. Well done. A formidable fortress I hope in the old style. That they will they don't build them like this anymore, you know. Not by the sea. Too vulnerable to cannons. Tyrion noble woman wants employment, but she doesn't give me any bonus to security, so no thank you. I hope that they will do something about the they loading screen length while in the I sequel. See much. Whatever they need to do to optimize the loading, I really think they should do. Alright, we're gonna camp. Lord Sidrock leaves, okay. Darian Noblewoman leaves, that's fine. Now, I need to kick somebody out of the party again in order to take Maneha. I guess it's gonna be Devil of Karak again. So you must gather your party before venturing forth. If you say so. All right, we got Maneha. There she is. Uh-huh. 
She has very interesting looking armor. I don't think I'm going to bother to equip her or even level her up. I don't care. I don't want to mess around with her at all. Yep. Hope you're not expecting much. Slowly now. Lead the way. I don't really remember. I have questions about the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. Me too. She glances at her boots. Why are you looking for the Abbey? I'm a gift bearer. My job is to gather tokens of things people want forgotten and surrender them to the Lady of Lament. Best place to do that is the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. Makes sense. Me too. She glances at her boots. What kinds of tokens do you take? Anything that represents a moment or a memory someone wishes to leave behind. Well, love notes, awkward family heirlooms, bad poetry. The kinds of things you want to forget. I feel like this voice actress, this voice acting for this character is really bad. Like, really inappropriate for the character, but I don't know. Gift bearers usually dispose of tokens in the sea. Why are you going to the Abbey? Well, you throw some things into the sea, and maybe they wash up on shore one day. But you want something really good and forgotten, you take it to the Abbey. She nods. So what are you taking to the Abbey now? The Abbey's all about forgetting. Wouldn't be much forgetting if I told you about it, would there? I guess she's got a point there. She gives you a sly grin. Her smile falters briefly, so there's more going on here than she's letting on. I see. Alright. We've talked to her about all the stuff before. I just didn't remember because it's been so long since we picked her up. Let's just go. Let's just take her to the Abbey and see what happens. Let's just take her and see what happens. Hopefully this doesn't lead to us having to fight everybody at the Abbey, because again, that will make me really unhappy. Okay. That's bothering me. I feel like I need to level her up. I don't know what to pick, though, for her stuff. Um... Um, Bloodthirst, Barbaric Retaliation, Dragon Leap, Dragon Leap, obviously we're taking that.
Brains have some kind of cool abilities. I don't know what I should be taking, so I'm just taking whatever. I don't plan to use her for very long, you know, so... Good. We're done. Tell She's me. leveled up. Look how much health she has! Hey! Wait, why why is my UI huh? for these two their health is like super 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 hey. small on there? What the hell's going on with that? Or not health but endurance, I mean. She has a gang of health too. 2160. Tell me. She has a lot of might, decent amount of con. All right, I don't want to look at all of her stuff. I should equip her with like better stuff, but I'm not going to. I don't care. I just that level up thing was bothering me. Oh, and if I find something good, you can have half. Well, here we are. If secrets whisper here, I shall so, listen. So, you said the Eyeless came from the Abbey. I'd heard rumors of the Eyeless, but I always thought that name was a metaphor. Though, I would have called them Mace Hands of Doom if anyone had asked me. That's why they didn't. Their name doesn't matter. They'll fall by my hand all the same. See, this is what I like about you. So this is the mysterious army you've been dreaming about, huh? It's a wonder you're getting any sleep. This voice actor doesn't sound anything like a barbarian. Just saying. Or an Amawa. That's why I came to the Abbey in the first place. To stop them. I'm regretting all of my decision-making up to this point. She sighs. Still, I guess a suicidal plan is better than none. Something on your mind? Yeah, there's something I haven't told you. What a surprise. Her gaze traces a wide arc around you. Well, I don't normally talk about this, but you mentioned your awakening. She visit fidgets with a string of beads. Is she awakened as well? How many awakened people do we have in this party? I guess I've had a similar problem. Oh, really? There's something I remember from a former life. Happened hundreds of years ago, but I remember it like it was yesterday. How did you remember it? Happened while I was fighting in Old Valia 20 years ago. My unit was camped out in the palace we'd just taken. The others were roasting the last of the Marchesos pigs in the feast hall. So, I went to the wine cellars to fetch a few bottles. She works her fingers into a knot. I don't know how long she'd been hiding there, but there was this old woman. Must have been one of the servants. Her fingers curled into fists. She had this wild look in her eyes. I approached her and tried to tell her not to be afraid, that she was safe. Maneha holds out her hand, reliving the memory. She screamed and grabbed my arm. She closes her eyes. It felt like someone had hit me in the back of my head. I blacked out for a few minutes. And when I came to, she was gone. She a watcher? Go on. I took a few bottles up with me, feasted with the rest of the troops. But when I went to bunk, I had a dream. She shivers. Only it was more vivid than any dream I've ever had. I tasted the sweat on my lips, felt the jungle air on my skin, heard the cries. She stops and swallows, shaking her head. What about the old woman? I asked the other troops. None of them had seen her. Anyway, I laid off the drink for several days, but I kept having the dream. After a few weeks, I, I thought a change of scenery might do me good. Since then, I've been a pirate in the Deadfire, a pilgrim in the White that wins, an adventurer in the Living Lands, and a gift bearer in a Shamadal. 
She gives you a rueful smile. What's this memory? It was a war. Centuries ago, before Adirin unification. She folds her hands in front of herself. I was a soldier then. Led a campaign across the northern forests to subdue some of the outlying Kalkland villages. Brutal work. Hmm. I don't understand. What war? This was 500 years ago, when Adir was a folk kingdom on one side and elven country on the other. They fought on and off before they joined. Now the folk and elven rulers marry to keep the peace. Okay, so before the f formation of the Utter Empire, when the elves and the humans were not yet united, okay? Right. The campaign. Go on. Lost a third of my forces to the forest, and another third to the elven scouts hiding in it. By the time we reached the first village, we'd crushed their defenses, and they'd bled us. She shakes her head. Wasn't much more than children and the elderly left, but they spit on us when we marched into town. A scowl twists her face. Her eyes are cold. The village elders surrendered, and offered us lodging in the old meeting hall. And when the sun set, they tried to burn it down around us. Good idea. She closes her eyes. They barely got a flame going, but that wasn't the point. They betrayed you after surrendering. Seems serious to me. And would that I'd had your principles. She swallows. In their defiance, I saw months more of pointless, bloody battle as we fought for the rest of the region. I had to break them. And I had to send a message to the rest of the villages. Her hands shake as she raises them to cover her face. So I nailed every last one of them to the trees around the town and left them there to die. Hmm. You've got no reason to hold on to a memory from 500 years ago. So I've tried to tell myself. I told you I was looking for the Abbey of the Fallen Moon so I could leave something behind. There's a pool there, the salt well. It's where gift bearers leave the heaviest burdens. She pauses. It's said that a person can enter it and leave their own memories behind. There's a distant, hungry look in her eyes. Anyway, we should get going. She shoulders her pack, and you catch a glimpse of something unusual in it. A thick roll of cloth bound by leather. What's that? Something I've been saving for better days. She tucks it away. I wanted to ask you about something. What you got for me? Tell me why you really became a gift bearer. I heard about the order from some missionaries while I was in the Living Lands. I'd heard Andra's doctrine before, but the way they talked about the peace of forgetting, washing the old away with the tide, it sounded good. And gift bearers work, taking to the road, helping people lose their own burdens, that sounded good too. Kept hoping I'd find a way for me to lose my burden along the way. Hmm, well hopefully she can lose her burden here. It's all for now. Burden of memory. Maneha confessed that she's seeking the Abbey to dispose of her own painful memory. The Abbey has a well in which the faithful can cleanse themselves of their pasts. Steady does it. Well, let's go. Hard to imagine a whole sect living out here. But I guess that's the point. Find the salt well. We've reached the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. Maneha believes the salt well is here somewhere. When we find it, She'll be able to wash away the memory that haunts her. Well, we've already talked to everybody here, so... Hopefully there'll be no... Problems. The deeds are an inspiration to us all. Interest blessings upon you, Tidebringer. 
Let's just head right in. We're looking for the salt well. I thought I remember so finding a place that I think might be it, but I don't remember where it was in here. I'll look at the map when we get inside and see if I can figure it out. I have a feeling this is going to prove to be more complicated than her just walking up, dumping her shit in the well, and we leave. <laughs> I have a feeling it's not going to go down quite that way. A thin layer of frost sparkles over this store of bread and cabbages. Pool of the Anointed. Ah, oh, that's the thing I was thinking of that I thought was the salt well. Chamber of Tears, the Rising Waterway. Oh, I think the thing, I think we need to go up to the Halls of Presence. But let's check, this is the thing I was thinking of. But apparently this isn't it. So it must be upstairs in the Halls of Presence. Please do not aggro all these fucking Andrites on me. No matter what happens, do not aggro all these fucking Andrites on me. I don't want to fight them. Go up to the Halls of Presence, and we will find this salt well. So... Is it that? Is it that? Hard to say. I guess we'll just explore around here until something happens. It's here. The salt well. Okay, we found it. In the room is a pool. It's small, but deep enough that you can't see the bottom. The glassy surface almost looks frozen. So does Maneha. She stands rooted in place, staring at it. You know, I thought it'd be bigger. Looks deep anyway. Gift bearers say the heaviest regrets and greatest sorrows get left here. So it better be. She peers in. What are you waiting for? Ugh. Maneha makes a little noise of frustration in the back of her throat. You know how when you've been thinking about something so long, you're worried that when you finally get it, it won't be what you expected? She tugs at one of her bracelets. I mean, for all we know, that thing's just filled with leeches. You're stalling. Don't remind me. She sighs. Alright, so lots of options here. Let's see. Hmm. Do it or don't, but make up your mind. You're right. She lets out a long, slow breath. <sighs> okay. Here goes. She shakes her arms and legs out with a jingling of metal. Striding forward, she steps into the pool. Uh -oh. oh, that's cold! She convulses with a sudden shiver, rattling her jewelry. She descends the steps until she's standing in water up to her neck. You feel anything? <sighs> I think I'm going numb, actually. She shivers again. This is the right pool, isn't it? She frowns and cranes her neck around the room. That'd be funny if this was the wrong pool. Don't look at me. 
Yeah, yeah. Just promise me we'll get a warm drink when... She freezes for a second, her eyes wide. Then she snaps her fingers. <gasps> I've got it! She digs through her pack and produces a thick bundle of cloth bound with leather. It's the same bundle you glimpsed earlier. She snaps the leather cords and unrolls the cloth, revealing a wine bottle. Took this from the Marchezzo cellar the night I awakened. Been saving it for a special occasion. Maneha cradles the bottle and brushes dust from the green glass. Heaving a sigh, she swings it by the neck and smashes it against the steps. I'll say nothing. Maneha drops the rest of the broken bottle into the pool, where it spirals into the depths. Meanwhile, the wine has formed a roiling, bloody cloud in the water. It spreads in long, swirling tendrils. Uh-oh, this doesn't seem good. Okay, this doesn't seem good. Fucking red blood tentacles was not part of the fucking deal here. The surface of the pool ripples, and Maneha paddles at the spreading cloud. Crimson tentacles erupt from it, writhing and reaching. Maneha gasps as one wraps around her arm. Madiko, what is that? Uh... Get out, Maneha. <laughs> Another wine-colored tentacle wraps around her head. She shouts as it pulls her under. Well, this is unexpected. Maneha disappears into the pool. You can't see anything through the crimson murk. Except for the blossoming cloud of wine, the waters look perfectly still again. The seconds crawl by. We must not linger in this place of foul mysteries. Groovy Mother's like, all right, let's, let's bounce. <laughs> Maneha's gone or whatever. Who cares? Let's go. <laughs> nice. At last, bubbles break the surface. <gasps> Maneha emerges, gasping and shivering. Her face is strangely slack, and her eyes are bloodshot. What just happened? She blinks at the cloudy water and laughs quietly. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> Maneha climbs up the steps and out of the salt well. As she does, the reddish color dissipates from the water, leaving only the glassy, clear surface and the unfathomable, unfathomable depths below. What do you remember? She squints, thinking. Water pools at her feet. I remember running. But I don't remember what chased me. And I remember fear, but I don't remember what scared me. She looks back at the salt well. I gave something up, but I don't remember why. How do you feel? She tilts her head to one side and wiggles a finger in her ear until a spurt of water streams out. I'll feel better after a glass of wine. Something drips onto the floor. She holds her right arm up and looks at the trickle of blood running from a cut in her hand. She takes the folded cloth, the one she'd wrapped the wine bottle in, from the floor and stanches the bleeding. Maneha was granted clean conscience. She jerks her head toward the exit. Is that it, really? Quest completed, the burden of memory. Well, that was quick and easy compared to the monk's quest, damn. Uh, we found the salt well and Maneha surrendered her painful past to Andre. It may be too early to understand how this truly affects her. We collected some taxes and earned a very small number of copper pieces. Seriously, that's it? Tell me! That's, that's the whole quest? Plus two to her dexterity for having clean conscience. Well, that's nice, I guess. What the hell? That was a weird quest. With the memory of her crime erased from her mind, Maneha is finally at peace. She's able to focus on the battles before her, improving her dexterity. Uh huh. What you got for me? How have you been doing since the salt well? She laughs. I know that look. You're worried I've lost more than a few bad dreams. It's strange knowing my life's been shaped by something I don't remember. 
She tilts her head to one side, thinking. But I finally feel like I can look forward instead of back. She smiles at the thought. Now I just have to figure out what I'm looking forward to. She casts a sly glance at Palagina. Oh, really? We got some... A little romance brewing, huh? She's got a crush on Palagina. That's cute. But I guess that's all we can talk to her about. That's all for now. And the quest is done. Like it's over. The burden of memory is complete. Alright, I guess we leave. I'll see what's ahead. I guess we leave. We'll take her back to Cadnua, drop her off, get um, Devil of Karak back on our team. Then we'll go to the Jurgen's Battery, to the forge, and reforge the Hammer of Abaddon. That's the plan, anyway. That is the plan at this point. After that, I guess we'll go to wherever the hell the Eyeless are and, uh, you know, put paid to those Eyeless. We're just kind of going back out the way we came in. Part of the hips of the skeleton. What's the problem here? Okay. That quest was strangely short and simple and easy compared to what I was expecting. I mean, you go to you do the monks one and you go to go this huge spirit world thing and go all over the map and fight stuff and have all these conversations and do all these things. Her quest, she walks up to a well, she walks in, she gets she gets pulled down in it, she comes back out a couple seconds later and it's done. Quest complete. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. It's not saying it. Why isn't it you saying it? You must gather it? your party before venturing forth. Thank you. Thank you. Catechus Nuaacus. What? Yeah, you heard me. This place, as beautiful as it can be with the absence of children. Tell us that again, creepy mother. I didn't hear you the first ten times you said that. Alright, Maneha, you're done. Welcome back, Devil of Kara. Follow me. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. All right, and there's our normal... Hey. ...marching order. Four more. All right. Back to the foundry. One day, seven hours. quick save because shit is about to get dramatic we're about to reforge sure. the implement of a god
Wish I could have seen you deal with those monsters. Alright, are we ready to do this? Hey. I'm ready. Hmm? Right here. I'm ready. Hey. Now we are. Just in case something spawns and decides to try to fight us or something. Incredible heat ripples upward from the White Forge and laps against your exposed skin. The fragment of Abaddon's hammer grows warm in your hands as if in recognition. It is only a fraction of the size of the original, but there is metal enough to create a hammer fit for a person of your size to wield. In this forge, the fragment could be shaped anew. Let's recreate Abaddon's hammer. You call to mind every memory you have witnessed of the great hammer. The images coalesce and take shape in your mind's eye. You know every curve, every engraving. Even as a shapeless lump of metal, you can see the fragment for what it is meant to become. The fragment is slow to heat, even in the white forge, and quick to cool as you work it against the anvil. Sweat drizzles down your body and puddles at your feet. Your arm grows sorer with each swing of your forge hammer until you can barely lift it. Minutes turn to hours. As Abaddon's hammer begins to take shape, the ring of your own hammer against it takes on a familiar tone, one that you have heard in your dreams. With each strike, an image flashes in your mind. It is hazy at first, but it gains detail as the hammer begins to resemble the original. Over time, the image becomes a frozen landscape centered around a crater lake. Eyeless patrol its frozen surface in droves, and this can only be the place Andra described, Karen's Scar. The Eyeless pause here and there when you strike and look up as though hearing the echo on the wind. In the distance, as more details appear, you can see other landmarks, Stalwart, Durgan's Battery, and you understand where the lake lies in the White March, where you must take this hammer. Finally, with the careful etching of the last detail with your chisel, the hammer is completed. No sooner do you make the final mark than you feel a pure, radiant energy pulsing from within it like a mechanical heartbeat. There is an indescribable beauty to the shape and the weighting and the design. It feels as if this is the realization of the metal's purpose. You take up the hammer and its power rushes over you in waves and it shakes your body so hard you nearly drop to your knees. The tremor passes, but the surge of power remains. The hair on your arms stands on end. In your hands is a faithful recreation of a divine instrument. It's kind of a big so deal. Concentrated in what you now hold. Incredible. Which is reforged Abaddon's hammer? Who are these people? I've heard enough. Oh, it's Darien. The sounds of an argument reach you from the stairs. Darien marches into the room, arms crossed, while Wingra bounds along behind him. Wingra sees you and points enthusiastically. See, Darien? She'll tell ya! We can stop him! Tension crackles in the air. Darien whirls and cuts Wingra off with a chopping motion. If she's seen them, she knows better. What's going on here? Something killed a whole crew of hunters out in the wood. Tore them apart like dolls, insects. Despite his steady posture, his eyes flit and flicker like flies, and his upper lip shines with sweat. I told ya! All we gotta do is get him in range of these cannons, and then we blast him! Yeah, blast him with the cannons, that's what I'm talking about. She brings her hands together in a loud clap. We don't even know what they are. He shuts his eyes and breathes loudly through his nose. I do. Everyone turns to look at you. They're known as the Eyeless. <clears throat> What's your plan for dealing with them exactly? Darien coughs into a fist. The Eyeless are hidden at Karen's scar. I'll face them there. 
Wengra and Darien gape at each other in disbelief. That lake's notorious. Folk never come back from that. She breaks off, her eyes suddenly wide. Oh. Ahem. <clears throat> An awkward silence follows. Wengrick clears her throat noisily. You know those heavy cannons you fixed might come in handy. She grins, a mischievous twinkle in her eye. Darian starts to groan, and she holds up both hands. Hey, hear me out. Karen's scar should be just in range for those guns. You just point out your target, and I'll do the rest. That sounds great. I love that idea. If those things are on the move, we don't have much time. If you're really going to stop them, take this. It's the best of the ore we've pulled from Stalwart's mines. He gives you a solemn nod. It's not much, but it's good enough to make the old Pargrun and Smiths proud. So did you just give me some uh, Durgan iron ingots? You may call upon the cannons of Durgan's battery by using the heavy cannon blast ability in Karen's scar. Katie was granted heavy cannon blast. Never seen anything like it. A bit a hammer like that could crack a dragon's skull in one blow. Okay. She's got a serious fucking hammer there. Abaddon's hammer. I hope she doesn't have to wield that. Soulbound Warhammer, it's two-handed. It's legendary. 15 accuracy, 55% damage, plus 4 might. Despite being topped by a mere fragment of Abaddon's original hammer, this weapon, now sized for kith hands, is still an instrument of awesome destructive force. The faces of the Great Hammer's head still bear the tool marks of their creator. Not even the fires of the White Forge could erase Abaddon's work. So the only person that could wield this really is Palagina. She could wield it. And bind it and see what it does. What does it do? 10 accuracy against Eyeless. 50% damage against Eyeless. Grants destroy Eyeless on critical hit. That's good. Grants Ring of the Ancient Forge once per encounter. Radius from Caster. AoE stun for 10 se Holy shit, that's amazing! Grants Abaddon's Labor once per encounter. Crush damage, push. User 1 fatigue. AoE length 30 meters. Is it like a cone? Or a 30 meter line. Use the hammer to destroy the army of Eilis at Karen's Scar. Yeah, this hammer is no joke. Alright, well, that's gonna be Palagina's weapon now. Ready to wreck some shop with this bad boy. Alright. I'm ready. Ring of the Ancient Forge, that's the nice AoE stun ring once per encounter. Unleashes. The ringing of Abaddon's hammer is powerful enough to interrupt enemies around the wielder and leave them stunned. Unleashes the spiritual projection of the hammer's power, causing crush damage to enemies and pushes them back, fatigues the wielder. Oh, it's a line. Okay. It's a very, very long line of ass-kicking. Is that enemies only? That's foe AoE. That's foe target, so hopefully it should not affect... Alright, cool. Hmm? And she has a new ability. Cannon blast thing. Hey. Hmm?
Maybe she only gets it on her bar when right she's here. in Karen's scar. Reach Karen's scar. Andrew divulged that the eyeless remain hidden when inactive, gathered together in a place known as Karen's scar. Terrible to Karen's scar. A large fragment of Ioni brother lies in Karen's scar. It is there I must go to destroy the army of the eyeless. All right, so shit just got serious. I was also apparently given some ore. Find Durgan iron ingot. Well, let's see if we can use this thing. I do have some Durgan iron ingots. So now I have, what, two refined? That's Durgan refined already. That's Durgan refined already. I think we were going to Durgan refine her weapon. I think we are, yeah. Silver Flash. It's either that or we're Durgan refining his armor. No. No, we're going to Durgan refine Silver Flash. There we go. Sweet. Exceptional. Need a Sky Dragon Eye. Or a Kraken Eye. Being quiet. All right, I guess we're heading to um, the place. We're heading out to uh, travel directly to Karen's scar. Music reminds me of The Witcher all of a sudden. Mmm. New loading screen. So that must be the piece of the fucking moon. The fragment of Ioni Brother, which is one of the moons that's fallen and made this crater. That must be it on the loading screen there. Man, this is getting epic. That was a curiously short loading screen. Make your way to the fragment of Ioni Brother. Lying near the center of the frozen lake in Karen Scar is a fragment of Ioni Brother, the fallen moon. Within it is the means to put an end to the Eyeless. I have found where the Eyeless are based. I must find a way to destroy them before they come after me with their full strength. Andra has assured me that when the time comes, she will tell me what I must do. She has said that I need to be in the heart of their stronghold in order to execute her plan. Huh? And now now she has the ability. Heavy Cannon Blast. Once per rest? Thirty-five to fifty pierce, hundred percent damage is crush. Prone for three seconds. Your allies of Durgan's battery fire the heavy cannons toward Kairin's scar, inflicting tremendous crush damage and knocking enemies prone. But it's not foe AoE, so this this will hit. Well, we don't know if it'll hit it, because it doesn't look like an, I can aim it. Oh, I can. I can aim it, and it does look like it would hit us. Okay, so I have to be careful with that. And here we are. Karen Scar, presumably the final place of the of the expansion of the White March. Uh, so those two quests will be done here. We still have the fucking Alpine Dragon, and all the rest of this is base game. 
base game. Oh yeah, and then we have this Cadnua thing to do as well. Okay. So, here we are. Kieran Scar. And, that's going to do it for this episode. So thanks for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity.